To install Kali Linux on a virtual machine inside of VirtualBox, we'll start by downloading the correct package. So you can go to the Kali website, or if you're not sure what that is, you can type in Kali and download. And then either go to the downloads page with the first link or follow one of the sublinks. And here you'll find the images. So starting out at the top are more pure images like ISOs. But if you scroll down close to the bottom of the table, you'll notice some different virtual machine images. And we're going to pick the one for VirtualBox, but they all go to the same page anyway. So technically it doesn't actually matter which of these links you click on. You're going to go out to the offensive security page. Once you reach this site, if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see another table with VMware images by default, but you can click this tab here to go to the VirtualBox images. And for most systems, you'll download the 64-bit. If you have a 32-bit system, there's a link for you below. So you're going to click this link and download the OVA file. So once you click that, you hit Save File, and just be sure you know where it is you're saving the file to. So you can hit OK, and then you'll start downloading the file. We've already downloaded the file, so we're going to go over here to the downloads, and we'll see our file's been downloaded. And here's the downloaded file. It's a large file, so it's going to take a long time to download, somewhere around 3 gigabytes. Once we get the file downloaded, we're going to go over here to VirtualBox. We're going to go to File and Import Appliance. We'll click on Import, and then click on this little folder icon here. Once we're inside of the dialog, we're going to click on the downloads, choose our downloaded file, and click open. If you saved your file somewhere else, just follow these steps, find the OVA file, and select it and open it. That'll put the link to your OVA file into the dialog, and then we're going to hit next. You can change some of these settings here if you like. One of the things you may want to go ahead and do is reinitialize the MAC address of the network cards. The reason is, is in case there's two folks on your network who are both installing this same virtual machine, you don't want to have the same MAC address as somebody else. This is probably rare, but it's safe enough to reinitialize the cards. And then we're going to click Import. Again, this file is large, and essentially what's happening is this the file is being copied from the OVA over into the VirtualBox folder where your virtual machines are stored. So this process is going to take a while. Go ahead and let this file import. So we're going to let this process continue when it reaches 100%, then we'll move on to the next step. Looking over in the tree view on the left hand side, we can see that the import process has completed and the virtual machine is now listed on the left hand side. At this point, you can change the settings of the virtual machine while it's still powered off if you like by clicking the settings icon and then making adjustments. 
The most common adjustments would be changing the amount of RAM that's installed in the virtual machine. Be careful not to increase this too much because you need to leave plenty of RAM for your operating system to run. In this case, we're running on top of Windows. We'd want to leave a couple of gigabytes for Windows to be sure, if not more. The other common setting is to change the amount of disk space that's available. And this can be done under the storage. But you'll notice that there's 80 gigabytes allocated by default. And this is generally plenty for most users. At this point, if you're happy with your settings, you can go ahead and start your virtual machine. So to recap, we downloaded the proper OVA file. We used file import appliance to bring the virtual machine into the virtual box system. And we waited for the import process to complete. And now we're ready to go ahead and start up our Kali Linux virtual machine.